Okay, and for the side view, if we try and come in and mount it without any modifications, the engine actually doesn't even sit properly. A, the chain guard is blocking this side of the engine from sitting flush so that we can mount it up front. But even if that were the case, and even if we could go low enough to mount it, this engine is at such a ridiculous angle that the carburetor is not gonna flow properly and we're not gonna get the maximum engine performance out of that setup. So, because this distance is so wide and because this is the 1.38 inch bar, we're gonna use the front inch and a half CNC engine mount. Now, because that's an inch and a half and that's 1.38 inch, it's not flush and it's not gonna sit. So we'll deal with that in the uh, future step. But once we set this up, you will see that it will sit flush in the back and it will sit flush up in front. And then there will be about an inch of clearance on that side. So that is how we're preparing to mount our engine today. Okay, so the, the dilemma here is in this bar thickness and it is not meeting up with our one and a half inch front engine CNC mount. So as you can see by the caliper, we're looking at a 1.38 inch bar. And our one and a half inch, a little tad over our one and a half inch CNC engine mount. So it's good that's actually over just a little bit of one and a half inch because now what we need to do is create a shim. And unless you order these specifically off of mbrebel.com for $44, which are the one and a quarter inch front CNC engine mounts, you're gonna have to create a shim in here. And I really, really, really do not recommend using rubber in between your frame and the CNC engine mount on either connections because over time that engine's vibration is going to break down that rubber it's going to degrade and then it's going to create a loose connection and that is no good so what we're going to do is we're actually now going to need to go to Home Depot go pick up a steel uh, conduit nipple which is a one and one quarters inch diameter and with that one conduit, we're gonna splice it into three sections and we can use it three times for future builds if we want. So that's our next step. Okay, just got back from Home Depot, found our conduit. It's a little bit shorter than I typically get, so we're gonna get two cuts out of this. And as you can see from our measurements, we're in inches, we're looking at about 1.6 inches in length. The ID, 1.39. And our OD, 1.61. So that is gonna fit perfectly. Another thing I like about these conduits is that they have the threading on the outside which is more friction and traction for our CNC engine mount once we clamp over it. It's really going to prevent that CNC engine mount from moving and twisting. So these act as a grip. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this baby in half. We're going to get our half line. And of course you can cut this any way you want. If you want a hacksaw, knock yourself out. Not literally, but have fun with that. I just use a typical cutoff tool. If you have a metal cut saw, use that for sure. But make sure they use the proper safety equipment. We're just gonna go ahead and cut this down the line. Okay, and after getting your half piece of that conduit. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it in half. 
widthwise so that we're able to sandwich it together. Alrighty, next, now that you have your two pieces of your shim, once again, we already talked about the threading on the exterior of this shim. Now on the inside, we're gonna do kind of the same thing. As you can see, it is already kind of rigid and rough, but all we're gonna do is very, very, very lightly, we're going to score in a couple of traction lines, which are gonna act as an inside friction bar when we sandwich this together, and it'll keep it from moving side to side if we have those friction bars. So we're just gonna very lightly score it. Okay, just very lightly scored. And it adds a little bit of roughness. And when we sandwich that together, it's gonna to really lock that in place. And now that we're on pre-mount, we are going to check. So as you can see, that is gonna fit perfectly inside. Perfectly inside. And with the other piece on the bottom, Perfectly. And now when we sandwich these together, it's just gonna sit like that. And as you can see, it's still not flush, but these are loose enough that once we start to tighten these, that they will sandwich together and it will clean it will create a clean locked setup. Okay, so the next dilemma that we're gonna face on mounting this with the CNC mounts, the one and a half inch, is that the Zeta 440s, the YD100s, and most new engines all have the M8 studs. And as you can see, that doesn't fit the M8 stud. It's not wide enough of a width to fit. So to solve that, what we're gonna do is take out these M8 studs. Okay, then we're gonna open up our package. Okay, and when you're set for the next step, Going to go ahead and put in a little Loctite into our threading. There is a difference between blue and red. Use the blue that so that you can remove it. We're going to get our smaller M8 nut. Put a lock washer and a washer Oops. on the CNC mount. And what we want to do is we're going to need the top so that we can mount it from the bottom and our engine sits just a tad higher. So from the top. Alrighty, we don't want to secure these bolts in quite yet because we are gonna to have to adjust it to get into the center. And we may also need some wiggle room while mounting this CNC engine mount. So next step, I wanna get some M6 Allen bolts. I'm going to do a lock washer, a small washer, and then a wider washer. And that way I'm able to have plenty of space that that Allen, no matter how much I torque it, it will not fall through that gap. So it's gonna be double secured. I also wanna think about what side I want my Allen bolt when I'm tightening. So on this side or that side, I want it on the magneto side. So I'm going to slip in my bolt setup and then I'm going to slip on my CNC mount. I'm going to put a washer on and then an M10 Oh, sorry, M6 lock washer nut. I'm going to tighten it on. 
I'm just going to finger secure it. Then I'm going to do the same with the other side. Got my lock washer, my smaller washer, and then a wider washer. Come in from the top. Slip it on. M6 washer. M6 Allen. Finger tight. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to center this where I want it, tighten it down, center this where I want it, tighten it down, and then we're ready to mount it. Okay, and when you're ready to mount your engine, you want to go ahead and put your shim in and line this up to where you want it. Try and be careful because that shim will scrape your frame. So try and get it where you want it on first go. There. Once you have it set and you're lined up, put your bottom on. Okay, line it up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock tight. My bolt's going in just a little bit with blue Loctite in case I ever have to come in and undo it. Okay, and I'm going to want to torque these evenly, so I'm just going to get it in. And then I'm going to set the other one. Make sure that gets in. Now because what you're doing is you're going to be sandwiching that shim, you're going to want to do them equally. So give that some turns. Give this one some turns. Okay, and wait for it to be snug. Just snug. As you can see right now, it's still a little bit loose, so I'm going to keep going in. Okay, now it's getting snug. Okay, once it's snug, you're gonna wanna come back and secure the backside. Okay, so we got that engine mounted with the one and a half inch front CNC engine mount to the 1.38 bike bar. We have that shim inside, perfect match. Room to give on that, but it's very, very secure and that thing is going nowhere. And leaves plenty of room for a carb. Not to mention plenty of room between the chain guard and the engine for clearance. And it also fills up this entire area a little bit better than if it were sitting low. So hopefully that helps you all. I appreciate you watching. Be sure to come back and check us out. we got some more videos coming out here very, very soon. Be sure to like and subscribe and smash that like button, everybody. Well, until next time, fly low and avoid the radar.